Hello, this is You Mind We Craft, and today I'm going to be showing off my teleportation system. And now, what this involves is the ender pearl being thrown, and uh, then, based off the ender pearl, the person will throw it will get teleported to a pre uh, desired a preset location. During them being teleported, a vortex will be spawned around them as well as the teleportation sound. And if the player moves from where they threw the ender pearl, then they will not be teleported. So they have to be stationary and not moving. So let's show you this in action. Vortex spawns. Teleported. So, what happened was spawners were spawned below me with a minecart in it with an offset value, with a, a tile entity in it with an offset value so that it spun around me. And all these blocks were replaced with what they were previously. Now, what happens is when I'm throwing it, it's detecting location of it, then Spawning them underneath, uh, uh, cloning this to a separate location, spawning the spawners underneath me, uh, playing the sound, and then cloning them back. That's the basics of it anyway. Um, okay, so now I'm going to go into the detail of it and how I did uh, the command locks and the commands. If you just wanted to know that this could be possible in Minecraft, then you can just stop watching now. Or if you wish to see how I actually did it myself, then feel free to keep watching. Okay, so there's a few scoreboards I have set on here. There's three ones we need to be concerned with. Now, that's a scoreboard on ground. There's another scoreboard TP happening and another scoreboard TP. Now, on ground and TP happening are quite self-explanatory. The scoreboard on ground tells you, uh, detect whether the player is on ground or not. The scoreboard TP happening is if there's a current teleportation happening somewhere in the world and TP is the is a value set to a player and that player is the one who's being teleported so basically it all starts off by here and it detects for a thrown ender pill now if it is it will set the closest players scoreboard value of TP to 1 It'll also kill the end of pill then after that's complete. Then after all that, the end of pill is given back to the player. So this means that because there's a slight delay, the person can't spam the end of pill and makes it harder for the mechanism to be broke. So after it's successfully detected the end of pill, set the closest player's value to TP1. If you come along here, this detects uh, for a TP uh, value of TP1, then it checks if on ground is if they're on ground, and it checks that there's no current TPs happening. Now, how on ground works is I had to figure out a way of converting the player MBT tag data into a scoreboard value. So I basically got these four command blocks by here. They test the MBT tag for a player if they're on ground, and if so, it'll set their set the value to on ground equals one. And over here the same. So if I jump and I'll keep switching between them. And now this was necessary so that I can test it in the criteria of a test of an at A or an at P. So without doing this I couldn't have converted I needed to convert it because otherwise I wouldn't have been able to test in the criteria. So after this, um, these command blocks by here, these six command blocks, one, two, three, four, five, six yeah, command blocks are responsible for um, setting the blocks beneath me to what they need to be, so the spawn and all that. Oh, I forgot to mention, sorry, that this um, clones the blocks for the player. So let me back up a bit, yeah, sorry. So it comes over here, it clones the blocks, clones the blocks beneath the player from where they teleported to this location back here, then sets the blocks from where the player teleported to uh, the specified spawners and empty block, six blocks there is empty block. And in the empty block space, uh, a floating item of an ender pearl is spawned. It has a count value of zero, so it cannot be picked up. And 
it has a specific set UUID. So when all that's done then over here, um, the value of TP happening is set to one and the player uh, TP value is set to zero. Because from this point on, we don't need any data about the player. We just need the location of the UUI, uh, the item, um, item entity with specific UUID, which we can reference to. So this tests if a TP is happening. If so, it'll play uh, the teleporting sound to the, to the player closest player of the um, item entity. It'll teleport, and after a long wait of the sound being played, it'll teleport a player within a radius of six, close player within a radius of six. Now this means that if I threw it from here, I have to be stood on this block. If I stand on this block, I'm out of the radius because the item will get spawned by here. This block is here, is in within a radius of six, and this isn't. Um, so on a flat map like this, it works perfectly. On an uneven map, it still works, but the player is allowed to move with you know wider variety of uh, wider area. So then the blocks are cloned back from what they previously were. So the set blocks by here are cloned back to wherever the te player teleported from. Um, it kills the tile entity uh, of the floating entity and sets the TB happening to zero. <sighs> okay, so I've done quite a lot of testing with this. Now you can spam the ender pearl and it's quite stable um, and it can be used quite stably as I mean you can throw it a lot of times and it's quite hard to break. If you do spam it or more than one people people spam the ender pearl, then it does break occasionally depending on the server lag and the lag of the client. But if it's quite quick, then it should be able to work perfectly. So I can spam this and I'll just look at it teleported successfully. Now I can throw it over here and move over to a different location and it won't teleport me, but the blocks will still get set to what they were previously. So with the clone command, it also clones all information about the blocks, including uh, information within command blocks, so players actually can't break it in any way possible, as far as the blocks beneath. The blocks beneath will always be safe, uh, unless, like I said, server lag, or spam by more than one player. So I'd recommend having this used by um, a one player map, like I am going to use, and have a rule of don't spamming it. Now, if they do spam it, like I said, it's hard to break, but it is possible if they spam it enough. So if you want any of the command block text, then don't then feel free to ask. Don't worry about asking. Ask as many questions as you want. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Please comment, rate, subscribe, and share. And goodbye.